Okay, welcome back, everyone. Uh, and good afternoon. It's my privilege to introduce today's speaker, uh, Dr. Larissa Kazumajic Kavedic. And I am sorry for messing that up. Uh, my my pronunciation of Bosnian names is not so good. Uh, uh, and Larissa is an associate professor at the University of Sarajevo, Faculty of Philosophy. Uh, widely recognized for her work on the pedagogy of post-conflict peace and reconciliation, Larissa's peace-building engagement began during the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina with the co-founding of an organization named Sezam. Uh, that was in 1994 and 95. And that, uh, that work was dedicated to working on child trauma, war trauma, peace education, and nonviolent communication with teachers and schools in conflict-affected communities. Since joining the faculty at the University of Sarajevo, Larissa's teaching, writing, and research have focused on critical peace and intercultural pedagogies in teacher education. She's also also the founder and president of the Peace Education Hub, which was established at the University of Sarajevo in the year 2020. Uh, Larissa is a Cornell visiting professor this year in Cornell's Department of Global Development. Uh, she'll be here throughout the 2022-23 academic year. Uh, with support from the Fulbright Visiting Scholar Program, she's studying teachers as agents of change, uh, education for peace and social responsibility. And this project involves collaboration with area educators, teacher edu educators, schools, and the broader community. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, Larissa back at Cornell after nearly two decades. Doesn't seem possible, but uh, she spent an academic year here twice before, once as a Hubert H. Humphrey Fellow from Bosnia, and uh, subsequently to pursue an MPS in international development, the predecessor to the current MPS Global Development Program. So please join me in welcoming today's speaker. Thank you, Terry, so much. It has been a real pleasure and real honor, true honor to be back to the community of Ithaca and also to be back to the University of Cornell after almost two decades and to see some of my mentors and some of my colleagues and uh, family members here in Ithaca who have supported my work back then 20 years ago and who continue to support my work and endeavors now uh, that I came and revisited uh, Cornell and Ithaca with some new ideas and new projects uh, on the table. So allow me to introduce the topic for today uh, entitled Universities and Peace, the role of higher education and peace pedagogies in peace building, resistance and citizenship. My name is Larissa Kasumagic Kafedic, and thank you, Terry, also for wonderful uh, effort to pronounce this very long and tedious uh, Slavic last name. Uh, I come from Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, which you can see here on, on the map, just for those of you who are grappling to locate on the map where Bosnia and Herzegovina is. So you can see all these uh, European countries uh, that we are surrounded with. Uh, we are in the southeast of Europe surrounded by Croatia, Slovenia, Serbia, Montenegro, uh, Macedonia, uh, the republics or the countries that used to comprise the former Yugoslavia, the country in which I was born. But also you can see other European countries further in the north, but also surrounding all around uh, the, the, the part of the state of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And on the right, you see uh, the Faculty of Philosophy uh, and the university, the rector's office of the University of Sarajevo, on whose behalf I have actually applied for uh, Fulbright and I have been awarded a Fulbright Fellowship to come and present this institution, but also uh, discuss the work that I have been uh, involved in for more than, I would say for almost 30 years now. And I'll speak a little bit today in my lecture uh, about that history that is integral to my teacher identity. So this is the outline of my lecture for today. 
where you will have to see, uh, where you will get a chance to see how history has played a very important role in my own teacher identity and how that has played out uh, in terms of my commitment to peace education and peace values that are still strongly held in my uh, educational philosophy and also in my commitment to peace education. You will also see uh, the vision for future global community of educators that I have integrated uh, and relied on this personal experience, professional activities that I have undertaken for more than two decades now. So I will be discussing the positionality of me as an educator, as a teacher, a teacher educator and practitioner, because this was my early work in peace work. I will also briefly uh, mention the historical and social context for the development of peace activism in my own professional career, but also of the peace activism within the frameworks of educational system in Bosnia, but also globally in the world. I will touch upon briefly on some of the theoretical foundations for peace learning, peace pedagogy and peace education by also discussing and unpacking the critical considerations of the role of universities in conflict and peace, which is the major and uh, the central focal point of my and, and goal of today's lecture. I will also uh, briefly discuss peace pedagogy across the curriculum in formal and non-formal education. And I will also demonstrate how these bridges have been made, not just in Bosnia, but also globally, how they can be replicated and critically thought through in some uh, other uh, community and educational contexts. And I will present uh, an example of a comparative international research project that I was involved in that was entitled uh, Universities and Peace Hubs, uh, Higher Education Pedagogies for uh, Peace Buildings in uh, Institutions of Higher Education. And of course, I will conclude with some recommendations and some visions for the future in connection to my work. Uh, just to give you a little bit of traveling, uh, since I represent the University of Sarajevo, as I said, and this is the city that I have been missing also uh, for some time now, as I have uh, moved here with my family since three months ago. And uh, this is the city of Sarajevo, uh, the capital of Bosnia. Uh, as you can see, it's a very beautiful city surrounded by beautiful Winter Olympic uh, mountains. So if you remember, I'm not sure if any one of you remembers 1984, the Winter Olympic Games, the World Winter Olympic Games that took place in Sarajevo. So we were very proud at the time. I was a young girl, but I still vividly remember some of these memories from the city of Sarajevo. And you can also see in this picture how uh, history and cultures have played very important role in shaping the architecture, but also shaping uh, the history and the culture of Sarajevo, but also of other places in, in Sarajevo and in Bosnia in general. And in this image, I also wanted to emphasize the diversity of different religions, which is also integral to the work that I do through peace education and intercultural pedagogy and intercultural learning, where you can see uh, the religions that have been living on the soil and in the territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina for centuries now. And we have three major uh, religions, including Islam, uh, Christianity, Catholicism, and Orthodox uh, Christianity, as well as Jewish communities, but also some other minorities living in Bosnia and Herzegovina for a long period of time. Of course, this situation has been worsened and has been uh, deteriorated as a result of the war. And I'll also speak briefly about some of these consequences of the war on the diversity in, uh, in communities and within in the education system in Bosnia. Uh, the first element in connection to my positionality as a researcher, as an educator, as a teacher educator, and as a teacher, which is my basic vocation, my primary vocation, but also as a community peace activist, which pre uh, preceded uh, my professional development as an educator through formal education uh, formation and, and experience, I wanted just to briefly mention, uh, because this lecture will not be about the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, since a lot of that has been written about the war in Bosnia for many years now. 
But it's also an inevitable and really important aspect to be mentioned within the context because this positionality of me as an educator in Bosnia and Herzegovina with the experience of the war is deeply defining my own identity as a teacher and my own commitment to the philosophy of nonviolence and peace education. So here you can see some of the elements of the memories and of the legacies of the war that took place in the 90s in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So I, uh, the war found me in the senior year of uh, high school, in the fourth year of uh, high grammar school, gymnasia we call it, which was a general education high school. Uh, and it was sometime in April that the classes shut down and uh, officially I never actually had a chance to uh, do my final uh, graduation in high school because the, the school was you know, locked down, closed down, and we were sent to go home. So the experience of the war for several years in Bosnia in the 90s at the formative age of my own personal and professional development at the time as a young teenager deeply has driven my own uh, vision of uh, many of the programs and many of the ideas that I have later on incorporated in my own uh, peace education work. I also put here several of these images of the houses because this was my early work as a community youth educator. So I did a lot of work on child trauma that Terry also introduced in the introduction. So as a young teenager, I uh, had this gap in education basically because I couldn't go to school for four years due to the fact that the Sarajevo was under the siege for almost four years. And being at the age to be adequate for university training and university education and not being able to actually pursue my education at the time, I got involved at that early stage of my professional development as a young activist in the, the field of psychosocial support for war traumatized children, which I did for several years before I assumed a position later on at the university and before I actually came for the first time here as a Hubert Humphrey Fellow. So these images of the houses and the shelling and bombing of the cities were very common themes of the children that we worked with. And I worked as a, I, I was one of the co-founder of that local NGO that actually emerged out of the international program, uh, International Medical Corps at a time that provided psychosocial support for war traumatized children at the time of the war in Bosnia. And soon after that, we joined uh, and we established our own local NGO uh, that primarily focused on, uh, as I said, psychosocial uh, programs and activities through arts-based education, but also through nonviolent communication based on the philosophy of Marshall Rosenberg, uh, which we did and applied in teacher education and many of the trainings that we did later on uh, uh, with teachers. After the work uh, in uh, after the work in Sesam and after the work uh, as a young teenager and pursuing my uh, degree during uh, right after the war in Sarajevo, becoming a teacher of English language and literature. I came here as a visiting uh, Hubert Humphrey Fellow for a year. And then as Terry also mentioned, uh, I stayed for uh, another uh, year and a half for the program in international development with a concentration on education. And I'm mentioning this project as well because this, this idea and this uh, mission and my commitment to peace education has been deepened with the experience uh, that I did here at Cornell because I also undertook the research in Bosnia of trying to design and develop uh, the educational program for post-war healing and reconciliation with youth and children in Bosnia. So my project as a final thesis here at Cornell was also related to post-war healing and the work with youth and children in connection to post-war reconciliation and post-war healing. During my Humphrey year, I have established a connection to the organization Facing History and Ourselves. I'm not sure if anyone is familiar with the program, but this is a Boston-based educational foundation. And during my Humphrey year, I did my internship for several weeks in this organization that also changed my life uh, in professional uh, way and has changed the way I perceive the role of educators in terms of their social responsibility, their commitment to peace, and their commitment to civic education and social justice. 
So I did, uh, I think, six weeks of the internship, which was a mandatory part of the Hubert Humphrey Fellowship. But since then, I have established very strong connection and facing history and their international uh, program director is also supporting the work of Peace Hub uh, that we have established since several years ago also at the University of Sarajevo. So I wanted to demonstrate these long lasting connections and relationships that have sustained and that have survived over time. Uh, a lot of challenges and also sort of uh, framed, as I said, uh, the educational philosophies that I decided to follow and integrate in my work. Uh, all of that as my previous experience, and I thought that this is really important to make this clearly as my position as a researcher within the specific historical and social and political context with my own personal experience, but also some of the professional endeavors that I have undertaken along the way. All of that has made me very interested in uh, educational system in Bosnia and Herzegovina that I have started to look from the researcher's point of view, but also as someone who has been experiencing and teaching and knowing the system from within. So I started researching educational system. I uh, started writing about educational system in Bosnia. And this is just, uh, these are several uh, principles or several elements that are still deeply defining uh, the situation in Bosnia in connection to uh, some of these educational practices. So studying these internal structure of the current educational system, or better say systems, because you will see how divided the educational system has become, will bring us to the conclusion that it, this system is a very com complicating, uh, very conflicting, very complex and very contradictory system. And in the international literature of education, it is also considered as a unique system of uh, education, but not for good reasons, really for complicated political reasons that have made the structure of educational system very unique in, in a way that it's deeply fragmented to tiny little pieces. And you'll see how that's, that is also preventing the processes of healing and reconciliation. But also, on the other hand, one uh, cannot but wonder how we got into this situation as a very small country country as a very small state with only 3.5 million people living in the state of Bosnia. This is the system of education in Bosnia. Uh, don't even try to uh, understand the structure. Uh, you can see, I'll just like to point out to these entities that have been also decided upon as a part of uh, the Dayton Peace Agreement. So the political solution that stopped the war, uh, the political agreement that uh, brought the war to an end in terms of physical violence, but you can see the legacies of the war playing out also in very complicated structure of educational system. So we have the Ministry of Education uh, in Republika Srpska, which is one entity in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Ministry of Education in the Federation of Bosnia and the Independent District Brčko. And then you see these entities broken down further to ministries. So we have 13 ministries of education. If anyone can imagine such a very, such complex and uh, unique system that is really producing a lot of obstacles, administrative and uh, of other natures. Uh, on the other hand, uh, such divisions in uh, the educational system have also created something that is called in literature, but also something that we feel as educators from within the system, uh, ethnic-based curricula that creates this self-reinforcing recipe for uh, extremism, if not critically tackled and if not critically uh, thought through. So this fragmentation of the system is grounded in a commitment to maintain these narratives of narrow party, national narrow party and ethno-national group interests. And they are playing out in the educational system as well, where the system largely relies on rote memorization. So this is the field related to educational theories and pedagogies that are used. So you can see also how they are not politically neutral as well. So the ways uh, that are used to teach students that are very much based on teacher dominated approaches and traditional approaches to teaching and learning, even though they have been ch changed, you can say, but still they are deeply cemented in the educational system. 
So a, a lot of rote memorization and teaching from the textbook, which does not foster these flexibilities in thinking, critical thinking, uh, critical media literacy and, and civic citizenship, but also the ethnification of the content in the curricula, because we officially have three narratives for the history teaching in the education system of Bosnia. So each side like pulling to their own side and no room really for considering some bridges between the narratives and using different critical approaches approaches to understanding what happened to our, in our history. So this ethnification that promotes us versus them mentality in a post-war region that has experienced little genuine political and social reconciliation because of these deep structures. Uh, and the introduction of religion. So this was a uh, this was a big uh, get in strategy to get religions back to school, uh, where these curricula have focused on doctrinal religious instruction rather than creating space for inter-religious dialogue or intercultural learning. And also the external efforts to support reform have failed to address the root causes. So not just through the history teaching, but also across the curriculum. From the report on representation of history in elementary school history textbooks, what is obvious in the context of Bosnia is that war is still seen as an integral part of life. So even almost 30 years after the war, this is still deeply present, not just in the textbooks, but also in the rhetoric of politicians, in the rhetoric of media. And the consequences of wars and peace agreements are discussed only from the perspective of the state and political systems. So these are political narratives. Rarely do they present and illustrate and shape the narratives of individuals. So individual citizens. Only 14% of analyzed textbooks develop an open and flexible attitude towards your own group and those outside of it, as well as challenge deeply rooted stereotypes. So this has been researched widely and never it's still uh, never systematically addressed as an issue because there is, as I said, because of this complicated structure and no sort of unitary vision for the state to move forward. And on the other hand, when it comes to research, relatively little research on how peace resources circulate among BH educators, what is the role of school leadership in creating peaceful schools? This is a very important and big uh, pillar in understanding the role of schools and also what are the impacts of peace education on participants and society as a whole. So we need more holistic strategies in terms of understanding these politics. So what are the important lessons of this context, of the political and social context? Uh, important lessons go in line with understanding that violent conflict can change and disrupt everything, literally everything that we regard as normal because uh, the toxicity of the toxic nature of violence creates something of a coping mechanisms for people to cope with something that is diagnosed as an illness, as a disease of war. And these conflict situations can have very extensive effects that are sometimes visible, but sometimes a lot of times they are still invisible, even 30 years after the war, but they, they, can, be, they can be described, they can be targeted, they can be identified. And they are related to the strategies and ways people and communities think about their past, about their present, about their future, but also how they feel, how they remember the past experiences, their personal memories of the war and the memories of the state, of the country, of the divisions, but also how they function in on a daily basis in connection to these memories. These long-term dislocations, the forcibly dis forcible displacement, severe traumas, war traumas, and for Agility can further complicate the issues that need resolution. Education, in that sense, this is a very important lesson also and has been researched from different angles and different case studies globally. Education is never neutral. It's never neutrally, you know, we even if we say that we follow a political strategies in education, uh, these positions are never neutral and neglecting the role of education in peace building can either contribute to cycles of conflict. So this is research in theories uh, where education is seen as an accomplice an accomplice to conflict. So supporting conflict strategies and rhetorics and really dividing further the societies, or it can be seen as a generator for peace education and peace values. 
Proactive approaches to peace building can increase resilience and provide valuable opportunities to rebuild, to heal societies, and also to grow as individual human beings, as citizens, but also as societies. And these strategic responses to violent conflict must think systematically. This is an important point that I'm trying to make here today, systematically in terms of generations and decades. Because uh, some researchers are claiming that we are always between two wars. It's just a matter of the distance between these two. So uh, on a more positive note, let me give you some good examples from practice that I have been involved in. Uh, but I think it was really important to position the research and the project that I have been involved in and all these, these professional activities. So this is one example of the research project that I got involved in that uh, included uh, four universities. It was a comparative international research project entitled Peace Building Pedagogies in Higher Education. And it was initiated by the University of Sussex in United Kingdom, uh, University of Kigali in Rwanda, and University of Los Andes, Colombia. And the University of Sarajevo, uh, including me as a representative of the university, was uh, working closely with these colleagues from other universities. And we did a two year project where we visited each other's sites, not necessarily all of them. The pandemic came, we couldn't go to present the results in Great Britain, but we managed to travel to Rwanda and the uh, participants of the project managed to come to Sarajevo. So we had series of different workshops and activities with some of these goals that I put here, that I listed here uh, on, on the slide. We had an idea to develop peace hubs of academics from our different countries and regions and also different disciplines that we were representing in order to discuss and reflect on how we might develop a culture of peace building within the higher education uh, institutions with the students through educational initiatives, but also through collaborative research projects in peace building pedagogies. So we were working really hard to document good practices at the university level that used some of the most effective and inclusive peace pedagogies through different subject areas and across the curriculum. And we also wanted to work on educating students and teachers on how to work for peace and nonviolence in their classrooms, in their schools, and in education in general. And this whole project uh, resulted, resulted in a publication, Pedagogies for Peace Building in Higher Education, How and Why Should Higher Education Institutions Get Involved in Teaching for Peace? For those of you who would be interested in checking what we wrote and how we compiled and uh, documented the results of this important initiative and this important uh, project. It's an open resource, uh, open source educational link. As a result of this initiative, uh, right before the pandemic, so several years ago, I started Peace Education Hub at the University of Sarajevo as the center for peace education after so many years. And you could see a long way of my personal and professional activities uh, with something that I have always cherished as a vision of the importance of having and launching and really putting this as an inception, as a seed within the higher education institutions to have something which will be the program for institutionalizing and internationalizing peace education. And as you could see, no big talk and no big reflections have been done individually, yes, but institutionally and internationally with the goal to connect Bosnian case study with other international good practices were lacking in the context of education in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So let me just uh, share with you several of these uh, elements that were really pertinent and important in our mission and in our program that we set up as uh, the program vision and program activities. So we thought of, we are seeing the Peace Education Hub Sarajevo with a potential, with a potential for meeting and training small groups of students to start off with, small groups of teachers and community members. So you see here the link between the university and the community. And this is where my training in global development and international development, but also my own professional experience as a community uh, youth worker is coming in place. So bridging these gaps between the universities and communities in order to work for the peace building and build these nonviolence programs. We also see 
Peace Hub as a platform to support teachers of different subjects in focusing their action research and teaching on societal conflict and peace building issues, values, education, building stronger partnership with civil uh, society organizations, because we have a lot, a great number of these programs also within the Bosnian context. But rarely do we address the issues of peace education through the institutional formal education perspective. Uh, we also thought that Peace Hub could work on developing and strengthening the connections with universities, peace centers, teachers institutes, and different educational institutes, not just regionally, but also internationally, which is also one of the goals that I have set up for my uh, Fulbright year while here at Cornell. Uh, but also you can see several others because I'm watching the time. I want to give you some other important issues. So you can see a couple of other things that became very important for our work. And as part of our strategic planning in the Peace Center, uh, in our hub for peace education, we put at the heart of our strategy, promoting culture of peace and nonviolence in the use, in the context of uh, education and values development, international cooperation, but also seeing regional hub as the center for excellence and resource center in peace education that could contribute. You see some other goals here that are like overarching and these are long-term goals. So we, are, we have a long way to go there. And also infusing some of these elements through something that we call in Bosnia PPDM, which are the competencies for teacher education in didactics, uh, psychology, developmental psychology, teaching methods, and education, general education, opening dialogue about peace education through strategic cooperation with other partners, integrating culture of peace in teacher education curricula through internationalizing and institutionalizing peace education. And you also see here here, this is a part of our strategic planning, uh, some possible responses to some of the uh, problems and issues that I also framed in the beginning of my talk. Our partner organization in Peace Education Hub is a local community organization, which is in the, the international organization Forum ZFD, which is recognized uh, regionally across Europe, but also internationally. And we work closely with them, not just on research, but also on some publications before the center has been established on the pedagogical tools and pedagogical frameworks of using uh, the culture of memory and the issues of nonviolence and peace building through education. We also did a project as part of the Peace Hub and this initiative uh, with students coming from all these different universities that I mentioned, where we use cultural objects and images to initiate the discussions about conflict and peace in their own communities. So we have students from all these regions and regional communities, including Rwanda, uh, Colombia, UK and Bosnia, uh, who produced, they did uh, small research projects interviewing the senior members in their, uh, in their families or the community members, and they had to come up with a with an image to illustrate or to initiate the discussions of what peace has meant for them or what peace uh, looks like uh, 20, 30 years ago. You know that Rwanda and Bosnia had conflict at about the same time. So it all brought us to uh, framing peace education as the main focus of the Center for Peace uh, that we have established as our primary goal, because there are similar initiatives in Bosnia through higher education institutions that primarily focus on political and sociological aspects of uh, peace learning and uh, war, effects of the war on societies. But we thought that infusing and developing further peace education framework uh, would make its way through the system and would find the relevance uh, in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Here is an overview of some of the most important elements in peace education of today. So there is a consensus that uh, there are common core values of uh, in connection to peace education that are closely related to specific knowledge, values, attitudes, and skills that, you, that we want to infuse through peace education for our students. It is also an international ideal because there is a uh, 50 plus years of the work in the field of peace education uh, of lots of theory debates and discussions around what is meaningful and what is useful and what is effective in specific contexts. 
What is generally agreed upon is that negative peace, so just the absence of physical violence is insufficient for democratic processes and for the processes of healing and reconstruction of societies. So we have to think in terms of positive peace strategies for infusing sustainable societal well-being. So this has to be strategic and systemic. What is less agreed upon that inner peace uh, is also very important and what its place is in peace education practice and research. You also can see here that uh, these topics still produce some complex and sensitive discussions, especially in contexts of mass violence like Bosnia and many other uh, countries. As we speak now, we know that there are so many places at the moment in the world suffering from mass uh, uh, violence and human rights abuses. So it might be very sensitive and this also has been proved, proven in the context of Bosnia. And that there are different contexts and pedagogical aims that influence choices on methods and strategies that we use when we want to apply them. So that it requires deep self-reflection, conscientization and praxis, some of the Freirean principles and intergenerational and societal healing. And you see that it's a vast, challenging, but also worthy undertaking. Uh, these are just elements. I'm not going to go into the details, being observant of time. So these are just some of the frameworks that probably some of you have experienced or worked with or on that overlap with the uh, goal of peace education. So you see here disarmament education, which were some of the, the early uh, programs in peace education, in the history of peace education, but also human rights, nonviolence, environmental, global citizenship. And you can see also ethics, socio emotional character and values education that I could see also in the programs in the US, but also in some European contexts, multicultural education, intercultural and many others. And on the other hand, as much as these discuss the what in peace education, so they are primarily concerned with the programs of what we teach in connection to peace learning, peace pedagogy, on the other hand, discusses how we implement these strategies in the classroom. And this has become the primary concern and focus and research goal in the work that we have undertaken and that we have positioned for and set up for the program of our Peace Hub. And he, he, here I put uh, the title of Peace Pedagogy in Bosnia and Herzegovina Theory and Practice in Formal Education that I did with a very uh, good friend of mine and a colleague, Sara Clark Habibi, with whom we have actually co-edited a book, a selection of uh, research examples and practitioners' narratives and stories of good practices in Bosnia and Herzegovina on how peace is actually implemented in, in deeply divided and very complex educational structures that I have just demonstrated. So some of these principles in connection to peace pedagogies, you can see here, we discuss them extensively, but we also offer some good examples. And this book should be out by the end of the year. And I'm hoping we might arrange something of the presentation or a discussion to continue the dialogue around the issues in peace education in, in universities and formal education with the coming uh, of this book. So to gradually go towards uh, the final part of my presentation, uh, as you could see in everything that I have tried to frame and position in connection to my own educator's perspective, but also some of uh, the theoretical principles, some of the experiential frameworks, there are many challenges to institutionalize and internationalize peace education in Bosnia. Uh, I put several of them here, uh, not connecting and contrasting past and present societal tensions, tendency to focus on just one or the other, and rarely both, so not seeing integratively, not seeing holistically. Another important challenge uh, for the university in Bosnia, but also I think globally, is this revisiting or re-questioning uh, the core mission of the universities in general. And what we are discussing also in this book, uh, the third mission of university that is also well known in some of the theoretical frameworks where higher education may be said to be related to issues of society and some form of moral responsibility to the community. So this is an important important aspect that we are trying to infuse and open the discussions around these issues in, in the Bosnian concept, uh, context. So the concerns with students' hearts and actions, so not just by their knowledge, but also, of course, in a broader sense, 
but how to use their hearts and actions to actually produce something that would address some of the burning and current issues. And I know that Cornell has done a lot of work in connection to this aspect of uh, dealing with some of uh, the current issues in the communities. Also, microcosms of societies. This is how we can see universities, employing some of the brightest and most forward thinking teachers, doctors, engineers, historians, anthropologists, and primarily public institutions, should they be prioritizing their contribution to the public good rather than enhancing their individual careers? So this is another challenge that we are trying to revisit and to bring on the table for a discussion. So in other words, should they be seeking to educate young people to address society's biggest problems, including post-war situations, but also risks for conflict and risks for war in uh, almost any community, if you want, the divisions, the, the segregations. And uh, another challenge we are facing is that no training uh, of teachers and educators to deal with sensitive and controversial issues has been in place. So this is a big topic. So when we discuss and open up a lot of these discussions, teachers are intimidated and teachers are not adequately equipped and teachers need adequate support to know how to address these very sensitive issues in their classrooms. So this is another important challenge. Globally, what we are also seeing as a challenge is deep marginalization of humanities. So I'm not sure what the situation is here. Upon my return to Cornell, I learned that there is no school of education anymore. Uh, so which also sort of saddened me because I felt connected not just to international development, but also to the School of Education. But globally, some of the trends of closing down humanities are some of the global challenges that we are seeing in Bosnia, but also I think globally, something that is also a challenge in terms of infusing these values and addressing these issues. Or in the United States, the relationships of belonging and uh, friendship and connectedness in order for those to be developed, young people have to feel like they belong. And educators, this has been a research done recently by uh, this organization in Boston, Reimagining Migration. Educators lack a culturally informed measure of school climate that responds to the diversity of their student populations. So there are 27% of students nationwide that are invisible, according to this research, due to the fact that there are, that there are mechanisms lacking to address these cultural diversity elements within the school classes and within the educational context. And if you allow me just to extend for several minutes, because I'm already, if I get the consent from just a few more minutes, because I have some final remarks, just one final remark. Okay, yeah, go ahead. We'll have, we have to, uh, yes, there. yes, but just, okay, I can finish with this uh, slide because I had several other, but I can finish with this slide just to sort of bring out an important, to emphasize an important message where the role of universities is in connection to not just near term, uh, situations where we are addressing the issues of conflict in countries that are immediately affected by the conflict or the devastating war, like the situation in Bosnia during or right after the war. But also you see all other possibilities that could be translated. And we can leave this slide here instead of uh, going, I had several other things, but I think this is an important slide, maybe for some other discussions, where we can see that some of these issues can be addressed through infusing them at the governance level, at the curriculum level. And this is my important uh, notice here, recognizing that each discipline can contribute to, you know, to the issues of peace, to the peace values. And I can uh, stop here if you want, because I also want just a few minutes past the time. So okay. I hope yeah. we will manage. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, th thanks very much. Uh, and before I forget, uh, I, I know a lot more you'd like to share, and I know some of the people here would like. Thank you. Uh, would like an opportunity to uh, to speak with you about that. So, uh, as in some past weeks, uh, we have an opportunity for some students to join 
uh, our presenter uh, for lunch right after this uh, meet in room. So it's man 102. It's the room yeah. across from man cafe. Okay, man 102, right across from man cafe. You can go there. Uh, Jenna will come in, take some orders, and and you can have some food together and and continue this this conversation. So uh, uh, we we have uh, limited time, but uh, uh, a question. There's a yes, question. okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, my question is led to countries that have been struck by wars and civil, civil wars, like Rwanda, Burundi, and other countries. There is a commission in charge of uh, truth and reconciliation in Burundi. And then their role is to see if they can bring up out everything that happened, to put like a light on everything so that maybe the next generation can know what happened. But also there is a different version of history about uh, some countries whereby those who came out with the, the curriculum of history were focused on one point forgetting another or some speculations i don't know and my question is what's the good approach to come out with the, the history of what happened and the truth of, on what happened and what can we do to address issues if i know that somebody that person is the one who killed my family so how can we handle those things Yes, thank you very much. So this is also, I'll try to briefly uh, comment on this so we can take another question as well. So uh, the situation, as I mentioned briefly, if you notice, this is also a very big controversy in Bosnian context. So dealing with different narratives of the historical memory and also discussing how history is taught and how history is integrated into the curriculum. So it's basically the language of peace, how you language around the peace education issues and how you language around, you know, what had happened. So about the memories and the legacies of the war. This being a very important issue and one of the most contested and controversial issues in the history teaching. And not just in the history teaching in Bosnia, but also in other national subjects that we call national curriculum subjects, like Bosnian language, Croatian, Serbian language, geography, but also history and uh, religious studies. So the way we approach it, the way I approach it in my own approach to curriculum and teacher education is to give our students the skills to know how to teach controversy, how to contain these controversies and sensitive issues in a classroom. And that requires in the beginner stages of the, of the curriculum and development and training, a lot of healing. Because a lot of these teachers who have had personal experiences of going through the war, it, it can be very difficult for them to introduce some of these opposing views or to introduce uh, other narratives that are also present within the context of, of the teaching. So a lot of pedagogies that I also listed, some of them that are inclusive, that are post-war healing pedagogies that teachers themselves have to go through in order to first understand their own positionality in the context of the curriculum and their positionality in the context of teaching and addressing these issues, then to be able to give their students critical thinking skills, critical analysis things, uh, but also the values of empathy and peace that we also want to infuse through these curriculum curriculum uh, frameworks. So I think there is no good model fits all societies. And this has to be generated as a consensus and has to come, you know, from within out, which is still a challenge we are facing. That's the best and the fastest I could get as a comment to your question. Thank you. Uh, we have time for one, one more question. The good thing is that we will continue. Larissa is here all year. Yes, that's she right. Has, she has an office in uh, B75 Man, and so uh, yes. uh, there, there will be opportunities for you to uh, have a conversation uh, about these uh, in the weeks and months to come. I saw another hand back there, I think. Is it one online? Okay. 
the second one. Okay. Uh, we have a question from one of our uh, uh, webinar uh, participants. You mentioned difficulties faced by teachers. Uh, do you plan or envis en envision a special uh, teach the teachers session? Abs uh, you mean while here at Cornell or just generally? I, I, we're not sure. I don't know. But definitely teach the teachers. This is absolutely something that we envision as a teacher educator myself working at the University of Sarajevo. This is the exact, the exact framework that we have been developing. Uh, we are working closely also with some teachers from the University of San Francisco. Professor Judy Pace, for example, is an active member and supporter of our Peace Education Hub, who has specialized in teaching controversial issues. She has even developed a course on teaching controversial issues at the University of San Francisco. So we are trying jointly and collaboratively to frame and to see what are context-specific issues that our teachers are grappling with in the context of post-war Bosnia, even 30 years after the war still finding some of these issues very contested and sensitive. So we are definitely trying to adequately frame some of these teacher education and teaching the teachers uh, frameworks as part of initial free service teacher education program, but also to offer them through our Peace Education Hub as activities for professional development of teachers. Uh, if anyone is interested, you can also email to me. We have summer schools for peace pedagogy that are international and global. So if anyone is interested in joining and participating, we have had those held online since the pandemic. We are trying to combine and uh, keep the model of hybrid uh, schools in the coming year. So please feel free uh, to, to just email, to reach out, uh, so we can also see uh, the possibility of having, of having you as participants. I don't think we have to uh, be in a, a post-war situation to imagine uh, the, the value of, of some of these skills, how to uh, manage controversial topics, uh, even in our own country. You know. <laughs> States today. So uh, thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Marie. Thank you, everyone, for your time and for your attention.